Hey up adventurers, welcome back. This is an episode of a new series, and this one is going to be bringing us back to good old Pathfinder Kingmaker. And as you can see, we are ready to rock and roll, and I've got myself a character here I'm going to show you, and this is Rain. Now, uh, I have gone through and decided on something I wanted to build. Last time I played this game, I realized there was a hole in the party. And that was in a role of a cleric. Like, of all things, there was no cleric, which was really weird. Now, I'm sure there were probably clerics later in the game, and people are going to be like, Oh my god, spoiler alert! Uh, but I didn't see them. So I went ahead and built a frontline tank, and this is going to be a fighter level 1. That was so I can get tower shield and heavy armor. Plus an extra feat was pretty nice at the start. And a little bit of extra health never hurt anybody. And then we're going to dump into cleric. With our cleric, we decided we would go and follow the goddess Desna. And she is Lady Luck, Mother of the Moon, goddess of the dreams, luck, stars, and travelers. Her whole thing is about freedom and traveling and exploring, which really fits the character pretty well. So I went ahead and picked two domains for that. The first one I picked was Liberation. This is all about freedom, and it has some great abilities in it. So. Anytime I run into difficult terrain or have an effect that prevents my movement, this will kick on and automatically disable that, which is freaking cool. The next ability at level 8 I get is Freedom's Call. It emits a 30-foot aura of freedom for a number of rounds per day equal to my level, and that makes all my buddies in the area ignore stuff like difficult terrain, confusion, frightened, panicked, paralyzed, slowed, shaken, and staggered, which is hella good. And, of course, we get domain spells to go along with that. So, Desna gives us uh, remove fear, remove paralysis, remove curse, freedom of movement, break and enchantment, dispel magic, greater, elemental body, mind blank, and mind blank communal. So, a lot of stuff that keeps us from being status affected, which in Pathfinder is real handy. Now, hopefully that's the same thing in the video game, and I'm not positive. Now, the other domain I selected was luck, and this is cool because it's going to give us rerolls on our stuff. So, a bit of luck, I could touch somebody has a standard action, and then they'll get free rerolls uh, to hopefully get better stuff. And on higher difficulties, rolling really goes against us most of the time, so extra chances are good. And then, of course, we've got Divine Fortune. This is going to allow us to have uh, some other wonderful things. And for spells, they get True Strike, Aid, Protection from Energy, Protection from Energy Communal, Break Enchantment, Cat's Grace. So a lot of really good stuff. Heal Mass at the end. It's really nice. Now in terms of what feats and stuff I picked, I went ahead and I selected Combat Casting. So that's going to give me a plus four bonus on our concentration checks. And those are really important, especially for a frontline caster. So anytime you're trying to cast a spell in melee, you will probably incur a opportunity attack on you. And that sucks. Um, now if it's like tabletop, that roll is as high as a 15 plus double your um, spell level. And you get to roll your d20 plus your, your caster level plus, in our case, wisdom mod. And you have to get above that stat or somebody gets to take a free swing on you. And if they do damage to you, uh, you may lose the spell if you don't make another concentration check of 10 plus double the damage. So that's pretty nasty. So combat casting is going to help us out there. Give us a plus four bonus against that. Uh, other feat that I selected is armor focus right there. And so we're going to be using this character as a heavy, beefy, armored character. So I went ahead and gave him a plus one bonus when wearing heavy armor, which is pretty nice. Uh, now we also are a dwarf, so we got some great abilities. We're slow and steady, so even when we're encumbered, we'll still move at 20 feet. We have bonuses against bull rushing and being tripped. This is a really good one. We have plus two bonus on saves against poison, spells, and spell-like abilities. So basically, practically everything. We get bonuses to AC when we're fighting against giants. We get bonuses to attack rolls against goblins and orcs. We get bonuses to perception. And we can use any weapon that has the word dwarven in it, as well as battle axes, heavy picks, and warhammers. Now, if we were just a straight cleric, this would be extra good, but since we took the fighter, it's not quite as amazing. But the Dwarven War Axe is pretty nice. So we may pick that one up. For now, right now, we're rocking a Long Sword and a Tower Shield. And we have a Neutral Good Alignment. I went ahead and bought us a set of Full Plate. We have a Cloak of Resistance plus one from a Quest Reward. Uh, this is Tartuccio's ring that he gave us for another plus one bonus. 
And I went ahead and found the Tiger pet, which is upstairs in Oleg's. And that's going to give us uh, apparently plus two bonus to perception and, and nature lore checks. Hadn't seen that in my first playthrough, so it must be kind of new. So that's pretty cool. His stats are 14 strength, 12 dex, 14 con, 12 intelligence, 17 wisdom, and 13 charisma. Uh, my thoughts with building this character up is that I will target selective channeling at uh, level 3. It's going to prevent us from healing enemies whenever we use our... Uh, our healing abilities for our friendlies. I'm going to pick up some other abilities. Uh, as soon as I hit plus four bonus on my attack, which should be, I think, level five for this character, I'm going to pick Outflank. And that's going to go and synergize with our other two melee characters to give big bonuses to hit and allow us to do a bunch of attack of opportunities. So that's going to be pretty handy. And we're going to keep building up kind of defensively uh, I'll probably pick up extra channeling and just kind of boost up his utility. Now, the reason why I don't mind this character having a tower shield and having all the negatives that come along with that is Cleric doesn't need to be a front-end damage dealer. They're a full caster, so he's going to be very effective at helping his team while just being a turtle. So I have a massive 26 AC and... Yeah, the touch AC is only 12, which really blows. But for the beginning of the game, this is going to be super helpful for most of the fights. So he's going to be able to damage sponge basically the whole beginning, hopefully, while our other characters kind of come online. So speaking of that, I've respect Valerie. I have made some adjustments. So I went ahead and I changed her from a tower shield specialist into an Aldori sword master. Now, she mentions it briefly in her backstory, so... She did kind of technically say it wasn't her preferred style. Um, but you know what? I think she will make a much better dodge and finesse kind of character than she would a tower shield specialist. And that's how I feel I will have more fun playing her. So I went ahead, kept her alignment the same, and I readjusted her stats. So she's a little less strong. She's a lot more dexterous, a lot less tough, but still kind of tough. She's a little smarter, um, still kind of a low wisdom. A little bit more charisma, but we're going to put that charisma to some good use. So we're going to be using this dueling sword, and I've got a masterwork one here, and that's going to allow us to finesse it. Now, currently, we do not have the ability to use a finesse weapon, uh, which is a little problematic. So <laughs> we will struggle a little bit at the start until we hit, um, what is that going to be, level three, where we'll get the rogue training, and that'll let us use the finesse ability. Um, how dash ever... She is going to be able to use his braces of armor to effect, since she's not wearing armor. So that'd be a plus one there. She's getting four firm dexterity for her armor. That's helping out quite a bit. And she will also be able to benefit from spells and the, and the like. Now, in addition to being the fighter, I also leveled her up once in Scaled Fist. Now, I guess the whole internet knows this trick, but in um, basically multi-classing, you can create some pretty powerful builds. And I have to assume this follows similar trends to the tabletop in that a dodge AC is going to be really useful if you can maintain it. This touch AC is going to be targeted a lot by rays and traps and ghosts and all kinds of crazy stuff. So having this really high is really important. And the scaled fist is going to be a type of monk. Normally monks use wisdom to generate their bonuses. Uh, but the Scaled Monk is going to convert Charisma into those bonuses. And in this case, the one we were really interested in was the bonus to AC. So she is adding her plus 3 from Charisma into her armor class. And that's real nice. And the other really important thing is that it gave us a free dip to get this Crane Style feat. And that's going to make her fighting defensively only incur a minus 2 penalty instead of a minus 4. And it's going to increase the armor bonus from a plus 2 to a plus three when using that. So it makes it a lot more effective and it's gonna make her a much better dodge tank. And speaking of dodge tank, she's got the dodge feet, which gives her another plus one. She's got weapon focus dueling sword for another plus one to hit while using that. And she of course has her crane style. And uh, I went ahead and tossed dazzling display on her. I don't know how often I'll use it, uh, but this is gonna allow us to do a full round action to make an intimidation check and all opponents nearby her will be demoralized. Uh, you know, if she passed her check. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough 
to really make it happen, but we'll go for it. And her saves are actually pretty strong right now. So again, at the beginning of the game, she's probably not going to hit much. She might be a little squishier than she otherwise would be, but I think she's going to be a solid build going forward. And what we're probably going to do is take, um, I think I'm going to take four levels of Rogue. And I'm not sure if I'm going to take Rogue or Thug. Uh, but basically we're hunting for the uncanny dodge. And that's going to prevent us from losing her dodge bonus whenever she uh, is attacked when flat-footed. And since almost all of her ACs can be based on dodge, it's going to be pretty important. The other things we pick up through that route, depending on which one we go with, uh, we'll get like a debilitating attack from the rogue, which is really good. That's at level four, and that gives us a whole bunch of different maneuvers we can pull off that apply debuffs. And we'll also pick up at level three, the ability to apply our dexterity modifier to our damage with finesse weapons. And that's gonna be a lot better than our strength. So once we get to those levels, she's gonna be pretty potent. And of course, like I said before, we're gonna take out flank on her to get her uh, juiced up at the beginning. And she's gonna end up being our kind of a rogue character, essentially. So she's gonna be fast, finesse, and have a lot of skills because she's dipping into rogue. So she'd be pretty nice. Um, and of course, we're gonna build up her, her uh, mobility so we can get these fighting defensively. And we'll probably take some mobility style feats, expertise, combat mobility, that kind of stuff. So I think she's gonna be solid. And then I respect Amiri. So you'll see I have boosted up her strength, I think her dex is about what it was initially. Her con's a little lower. Just kind of watching her play, I think her intelligence was too high, so I went ahead and dropped that down to 7. Um, I think she is pretty wise in the sense that she knows her environment, she's aware, and she's in tuned to the world. So I gave her a little bit more of that, plus it gives her more willpower. And we, I gave her a little bit of charisma. I mean, for one, the picture, she's kind of attractive, but... Um, also, she's just fearsome, and charisma is part of intimidation. And I think she has got a, for, a force of personality that will apply that. And, of course, I want to make her into a demoralizing character. So I also decided that I prefer the two-handed fighter over the barbarian. And I know she is a barbarian by default, um, but I kind of prefer the, the ability to act all day, every day to the limited pool of rage. And I also don't like that she's super intensely squishy in her default build. So in this way I can give her better armor, she's not taking minuses for being in a rage, and uh, we get more feats, and I like feats, they're fun to build. So speaking of which, what did I do with her? Well, I gave her a power attack, which is just a must. If you're using two-handed weapons, you want this. Trades off accuracy, does big damage in return, and with a two-handed weapon, you do even more. I took Cleave early on in the game. This is going to be really effective. Uh, while we still only have one attack per round, this will allow us to at least hit two if there are two enemies nearby. Um, we took the Exotic Weapon Proficiency Faust Shard. Um, Faust Shard is just a really good reach weapon. And it's a polearm type if you don't know what it is. And so it'll give us the advantage of being away from targets, not right up on the front line. So I think we could park her behind our two tanks and she should be able to be protected and lay out some big hits. Um, I normally wouldn't take it because, it, you know, who knows how frequently you're going to find foul shards, but I've already found one in the very first room. Well, not first room, but the first starting area. And that blew my mind. So I'm going to go ahead and take it. I feel like she'll either use a foul shard or she'll use a glaive for most of this playthrough. And depending on what happens, we may respec her to kind of take advantage of what we see. Uh, but with that, we went ahead and took weapon focus in the Faust Shard to get more accuracy, kind of offset the minus for power tech. And that's going to set us up in the future for our demoralizing abilities. So we're going to take Dazzling Display. We're going to take something called Cornigan Smash. And that's going to allow us to apply demoralizing anytime we use power tech, which is basically going to be every attack. And we're going to build up to Shatter Defenses, which is going to allow us to treat anything we've affected with a fear ability as flat-footed when we attack them. And that means we don't have to deal with any of the dodge bonuses. It makes them a lot easier to hit, and it's just very devastating. And so she's going to be a nice debuffer plus just mammoth amounts of damage. And with a two-handed build, you just get a lot more oomph to your hits. 
So she's gonna be super dangerous. And a lot of that power comes from stuff like overhand chop. So if she only has the ability to make one attack in the round, she'll get to add even more of a strength bonus. So normally it's one and a half times, this two times. When we get our second attacks at level six, we'll be able to apply even more damage on our subsequent attacks. They're way less accurate, but when they hit, they're gonna hit real hard. Pile driver is gonna be great. Creates um, free bull rush and trip attacks, which I really like. And then if we ever get this far, I doubt we will, but level 15, the power attack gets insanely powerful. So she's just gonna be devastating. I'm gonna keep her pretty much single class. I don't see any reason really to dip outside of that and we'll have a lot of fun with it. Now for the rest of the party, I originally planned on playing a kineticist with water and earth, uh, but I've since learned there's actually a companion character we could pick up starting in act two uh, that does that exact role. And I figure we might as well go ahead and play with a character that has um, some story. So I'm gonna wait until that. And our extra slot, I'm gonna pick uh, Octavia. Uh, I got her in the first playthrough and I really liked her. She is a rogue mixed with a wizard and I guess screams really play her as a arcane trickster. So I figure she's going to be a ray specialist, lots of direct damage, applying her sneak attack. And in this game, it seems like sneak attack is really easy to get. So we're going to go ahead and play her that way. So it should be our main damage along with Amiri. Our two tanks will be myself and Valerie. And then we'll have a, tele or a kineticist who's going to be a lot of control abilities, a lot of walls, a lot of, you know, making things slow, knocking them down, pushing them back. And we're going to also have Lindsay here. And I've done a little bit of tweak on her. Not much. She's basically the same as she was. I made her a flame dancer. Not a huge difference. Realistically, she just swaps out the ability that gave some use her song to do some bonuses. And instead she can use her song now to get fire resistance. May come in handy, I don't know. Uh, but the main reason why I wanted to respect her is I just wanted a couple different spells to start with. So instead of, uh, I can't remember what she normally starts with, but I want to grease, summon monster, and hideous laughter. So that's what I'm picking up there. But anyway, she is going to be our buff bot. So she's gonna give us all the bonuses and she's gonna be great at doing summoning. So I'm going to take her up that path. Uh, in terms of what feats I gave her, I've started her off with a couple just to make her crossbow decent. So you will see I took point blank shot and precise shot. Going forward, what I'm going to take is spell focus conjuration. That's going to let us get into augment summoning. And then we're going to go into, um, it's like greater summoning, I think, or something like that. It's going to give us extra summons whenever we do it, which is really effective. And then we probably will take her into spell focus with enchantment or something along those lines so we can do more of the uh, debuff abilities that come naturally to her. Should be really good. And I think that's going to be a really solid party all across. All right. So you may notice we are not at the beginning of the game. We are at Oleg's after fighting off the bandits. And I've already talked to all the companions, got all their starting story. And we're ready to branch out for the first time. First time where we actually have options. And if you want to see what all the beginning part of the game is like, what all the little choices are and everything, I made sure to do exactly the same things I did on that first playthrough I did. And you could find that playthrough somewhere up here in the top right corner where I'm circling. There's gonna be a little eye that pops across. And I'll put a link up there so you can go ahead and check that out. And in that one, I played a paladin and uh, showed you the whole beginning and struggled my ass off on the hard difficulty. Going through that the first time, I'm not sure I want to do hard until we hit level three or four. So I think on this playthrough, I'm going to start at level on a challenging. And then once we actually have enough levels where we're out of that like one shot every time we get touched area of the gameplay, I'm going to dial it back up to hard. So that's, uh, that's the setup for this situation. Oh, and by the way, the other thing we have is turn-based combat. and I'm looking forward to it. Big reason why I stopped playing really the first time around is I didn't like the way the game played. I much preferred a turn-based style. So it's gonna be a little slower. It's gonna be great. And as my character said, without a doubt, it's gonna be better. And um, that's, that's how I'm gonna play. So if you're not a fan of modded stuff, you don't want anything changed from the default, not your style. Sorry, this isn't gonna be for you. Uh, but this is basically going to be the gist of any modifications I'm going to make going forward. So 
Stick with me and I'll start up this series here in a moment. 